can David Bell be the next Jarvis Landry? So I think this is an opportunity. And again, people, we've been writing all these frequently asked questions. They're all over the site, cleveland.com. My gosh, you have it bookmarked, right? Cleveland.com slash Browns, it's bookmarked. You've been reading all of them, but we can discuss them more. I, there's two parts of the question here. I'm intrigued whether Jarvis Landry is an, an interesting name, a correct name as a comparison for David Bell, but there's also a conversation about just how good David Bell is going to be as a rookie. Actually, we'll start with you. Um, take it either way you want. Do you want it to be a direct Jarvis Landry comparison, or do you just want to talk about if you think David Bell is going to pop in year one? Yeah, you know, we can, I think you can kind of do both almost. That's a little bit of a cop out, but like, I do think when you're talking about David Bell, I don't want to compare him to Jarvis Landry immediately. And again, that's kind of what I'm talking about when I'm saying it doesn't have to be a one for one comparison, but you look at David Bell, like, you know, we've been talking about him in the slot. Uh, we've seen him there getting first team reps there and it's something he did in college but not a ton he got like 700 some snaps and I think like 120 some of those were in the slot Um, but what he's known for is catching the ball Andrew Berry got up there in the press conference after after they drafted him and said they thought David Bell had the best hands in this draft class and he doesn't have a lot of drops and that's also something that Jarvis Landry did pretty well like he was you know just kind of a constant presence he obviously rarely missed games also something David Bell has done so far you know throughout college and he could catch the ball really well so I think like if David Bell can do those two things in his rookie year and do it in a kind of semi-new role since that slot position is going to be a little different for him um, I think that would be a success, but I don't think you need him to be a carbon copy of Jarvis Landry, especially as a rookie for this to look right in this offense. Mary Kay, you think David Bell is going to be really good as a rookie or might it take some time? You know, I think he's going to be really good as a rookie. Uh, as we've noted, Kevin Stefanski has raved about him. Andrew Barry has raved about him. They're really excited about this guy. They feel like he dropped to where he did uh, because of that. 40 time, but we know that that 40 time uh, at the combine, whatnot, uh, pre draft was better than Jarvis Landry's or somewhere in that neighborhood. So I don't think they're overly concerned about that. And the bar for rookie receivers lately is very, very high. I mean, these guys are coming in and tearing up the league right away uh, in this very pass oriented league. So you're seeing guys like, of course, They're from the SEC, a lot of the guys that we're talking about. Um, But, you know, you're, you know, you see the Justin Jeffersons and you see the Jamar Chases coming into the NFL right away and being amazing right off the bat. And I think that is kind of where the bar is set in the Browns mind for David Bell. I I think they expect him to be good right away and that there's not going to be this two year learning curve for him. I think uh, he's going to be a big deal in 2022. Yeah, I think he's certainly going to get the opportunities that uh, DPJ and Anthony Schwartz did not necessarily get early on um, coming out the gate. Um, And that'll be big. Uh, But I, I, he'll probably get a lot of slot snaps, but I think like Jarvis Landry wasn't like he was, he got the most slot snaps his last couple of years with the Browns, but he was really moved around a lot. He was only in the mid like 50% range as far as, total number of slot snaps. Um, he got a lot of snaps out wide. So they moved him around a lot. It wasn't like when he was with the Dolphins and he's like in the slot 70% of the time or whatever. So that kind of evolved and I could see that happening more. And now you have Amari Cooper, a really great route runner who um, you're going to want to move him around and take advantage of that. And you have somebody similar to David Bell that you want to move around and and let them use as many routes as they can use to get open. And he's not some guy who relies on trying to beat people down the field or, you know, his game mirrors Jarvis Landry so much that um, I think that's going to be part, just moving him around. And even if he does get the majority of his snaps in the slot, it's going to be, you you know, I don't know if we're really going to think of him as a slot guy. I like preseason over unders to kind of put everybody on the spot statistically, Mm -hmm. because it's not always all about (laughs) stats, but stats represent, you know, a representation of a guy's value and how good he is and how much he's used. So maybe we'll do that on a future Orange or Brown Talk podcast when we get closer to the start of the season, but let's just do it quickly here. And you can tell me if it's a terrible number (laughs) and then I'll reset it at Doug's sports book. 
that would lose tons of money. I'll tell you what, if I ever open a sports book, you want to come to my sports book <laughs> because you will win. <laughs> Let's set it at 700 receiving yards for David Bell. Mary Kay, over or under? You know, I'm going to say under right now. Uh, and I think that is because um, every question can be answered like this right now uh, for every single thing that we do. And that is, is Deshaun Watson the quarterback? Is yeah. Deshaun Watson not the quarterback? Is he for eight games? Is he for nine games? So I'm anticipating that he's going to be suspended for at least six to eight games. Uh, and in that case, I don't think anybody's production is going to be exactly uh, what it will be next year when they have Deshaun Watson for the whole season. So for that reason, I'm just going to go a little bit under on the seven. Ashley. I'm also going to go under and on top of everything that Mary Kay said, I'm just thinking about if Deshaun Watson is gone, like the number of reps, you're still going to have to get to Amari Cooper. And obviously they're going to really, I think, need to rely on him for however long Jacoby Brissett uh, is in there. And then David Njoku as well. And again, like Scott said, Kevin Stefanski likes to throw to tight ends. Deshaun Watson, historically, whenever he comes back, has liked to utilize his tight ends in the past. So I just, I think that's a little bit high for David Bell in his rookie year, but he's going to have plenty of opportunities still. Yeah, I'm Scott, definitely going. I'm definitely going down under. Big bet, big hit, big bet here from Scott, slapping down a grand at Doug's sports book. <laughs> under 700. <laughs> under, under, under. Uh, I mean, it's still Kevin Stefanski uh, running the show and Nick Chubb is still on this team and um, no one's even come close. I mean, I think Jarvis Landry had over 800 yards i mean amari cooper could be the only guy over 800 yards receiving this year mm -hmm. uh that's a bet i would take but um i yeah i think there's too many other uh guys who are, are potentially seeing targets um even with Deshaun watson throwing the ball they're still going to want to spread it around and yeah i don't i don't know that david bell gets close to 700 so we know that sports betting is coming to ohio it's probably not going to come until january 1st but I might open Doug Sportsbook on an Orange and Brown Talk podcast in about mm -hmm. three weeks and give all you guys maybe a thousand fake bucks and set some over unders on the Browns, which might be awful. Scott will be like, I'm betting all thousand of my fake dollars on under 700 yards on you David should. Bell right. because Jarvis Landry led the team with 800 last year. Doug, it's a ridiculous line. Instead of fake dollars, you should call them Doug Bucks. Ooh, Doug see, Bucks. I like yeah. when we work it out. I like when we process. Ashley, the <laughs> Ashley is the marketing genius here. She had what, maybe Field. Baker maybe Field and uh, yeah. Doug Bucks. <laughs> I need to keep these ideas quiet so that I can utilize them in the future on my own and not not give Doug a chance to, is, to steal them from me. Are would, these like shrewd bucks? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> would I make a fake $100 bill and put my face on it and demand that be the art? that accompany the post for this podcast? Oh yeah. Yes, I would do that. Yes, so look we forward know to would. that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Eric Kay is like, are you kidding me? You're gonna like get off the, I have to leave right now so I can start making my own $100 bill. <laughs> That's a billboard out. waiting to happen. Yeah. Uh, all right, we're gonna bet some Doug Bucks in a couple of weeks. For now, we'll continue talking receivers next on the Orange and Brown Talk podcast.